Hey guys, Nurse Mike here and welcome to SimpleNursing.com. Check out our brand new app and get access to our new pharmacology and med surge mastery courses. Join for free. Click the link in our description below. All right guys, let's begin. Now for our neurological drugs. First up is our anticonvulsant phenytoin, given for long-term protection against seizures, like with patients with epilepsy and other long-term chronic seizure disorders. Now the key word here is long-term, so it lasts longer in the body, and patients can get very toxic. So the memory trick is we call phenytoin phenytoxic, since like most toxic drugs, the max range is 20. And that's the number to know for the NCLEX. So the big key points to write down is 10 to 20 is the therapeutic range. So below 10, we have to report to the HCP since there's a huge seizure risk. And over 20, we hold as well and notify the HCP because of the huge toxicity risk. Now, like any toxic drug, we do routine blood tests. So question banks love to ask, blood level monitored routinely. So that's usually the correct answer. Now we do this to check the therapeutic range of the drug as well as to monitor liver function since any drug that can cause toxicity can also affect the liver heavily. So the HESI mentions we hold the med for levels higher than 20. So remember guys, over 20 is very toxic. And we take the medication at the same time daily because of the narrow therapeutic index. Now, that's a really big key word. Same time every day for drugs with a narrow therapeutic range. Now, the next key point is toxicity. The early signs to report to the HCP, these are the big NCLEX tips, so write this down, ataxia, or basically an unsteady gait or gait disturbance, as well as hand tremor and slurred speech, or having trouble forming sentences. So just think, phenytoin is phenytoxic. You can't talk and you can't walk. So phenytoc or phenywalk if you're phenytoxic. Now for the other adverse effects, the key word here is suicidal ideations and skin rash that are new and painful. These are typically priority, since it could indicate Steven Johnson syndrome. So we report these to the HCP immediately. Now, some expected side effects. We expect to have bradycardia and hypotension. Since it's a CNS depressant, we expect to have low and slow vitals. Now, the big key point here is gingival hyperplasia. Huge NCLEX tip. Fancy words for overgrowth of gum tissue around the teeth, resulting in big gums that bleed very easily. Again, this is to be expected, so we don't stop the drug for this. 40% of students got this wrong and wanted to stop the drug for this. So guys, remember, don't stop. Big gums are completely normal. So we teach the patients good dental hygiene with a soft bristle toothbrush. The big thing here is soft toothbrush. And regular dentist visits and follow-up visits. So ATI says that you teach patients to inform the dentist that they're taking phenytoin. And the HESI mentions perform or assist with oral care every shift. And a skin rash and fatigue and dyspnea are priority. Remember, any type of skin rash could mean Steven Johnson syndrome. Very deadly. Now, the Kaplan mentions statements requiring immediate intervention. So, I noticed a rash on my stomach last week. Again, deadly Steven Johnson syndrome. And the second point mentioned was, lately I find myself thinking about driving off a cliff. Mmm, Definitely not normal. We need immediate intervention here. So as far as patient teaching here, switching gears, there's no oral contraceptives. So phenytoin deactivates the pill, leading to accidental pregnancies. So we teach patients to use alternative birth control, like an IUD. And there's no stopping abruptly. This typically goes for any drug that's acting on the brain. And we take folic acid, calcium, and vitamin D, since this drug decreases folic acid absorption and decreases bone density. So the Kaplan mentions this in a very interesting way. Encourage foods such as milk, cantaloupe, and kale. Now, all these foods are high in folate and vitamin D. And they had a second question that mentions, requires further teaching when the patient states, 
if I start having adverse effects, I will stop taking this medication immediately. Guys, that's a big no-no. We never stop abruptly or immediately. We always taper off. Now, as far as administration, one question bank stresses the importance of phenytoin with tube feedings, stating it can decrease the absorption as well as cause seizures. So, big key word here. Stop two feedings one to two hours before and after administration. This was mentioned multiple times as a priority, since two feedings can interfere with the absorption and decrease phenytoin effectiveness. So guys, we always administer the medication correctly. So for two feedings, we flush with 30 to 50 mLs of tap water before and after the drug is given. And then normal saline is not required. So tap water is okay. Now, as far as IV administration, we always flush the IV with normal saline before and after giving this drug. Now, lastly, don't let the NCLEX trick you here. So here's three points that students usually get tripped up on. So again, gums typically bleed, and that's to be expected because of the overgrowth of the gum tissue, but not the face. So there's no need to use an electric shaver. And secondly, there's no metallic taste. That's typically for metronidazole. 30% of students chose this as an expected side effect. And lastly, there's no photosensitivity. 50% of students wanted to think that phenytoin caused photosensitivity and wear sunglasses outside. But guys, no, that's not the case here. Now, our second drug for anticonvulsants is levetiracetam, given to prevent and treat seizures for those that are at high risk, like those following a brain tumor or surgery or trauma on the brain which can increase intracranial pressure. This is often preferred over phenytoin due to the minimal drug-to-drug -drug interactions. Now, the big common side effects, like phenytoin, it's a CNS depressant, so we get a low and slow body with drowsiness and fatigue. Now, the major adverse effects, just like phenytoin, we get the double S's here, suicidal thoughts and Steven Johnson syndrome. So we report any key words like new anxiety, new agitation, depression, or even mood changes. And for Steven Johnson's, we report rash, blistering, and even muscle joint pain, and even conjunctivitis. Now, the big key point is for the patient teaching in terms of driving. So we have to get permission from the HCP and follow transportation department guidelines. That wraps it up for this segment. Don't forget to take your quiz and download the study guides. Thanks for watching. For our full video and new quiz bank, click right up here to access your free trial. And please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. Last but not least, a big thanks to our team of experts helping us make these great videos. All right, guys, see you next time.